My dear friends, it's good to be with you. The Muslims have lost something that if they should find their way back to it, they will be able to liberate themselves. And I'm going to give you that thing that we've lost. I'm going to explain it to you. It's not, it's not that obvious. But um, it is something that is guaranteed, that is intrinsic and very essential to any liberated mu'min, Muslim, or any citizen of the world. Now let me put you in the picture as to what that thing is. You see, God says in the second chapter of the Holy Quran, Inni ja'ilun uh, fil ardi khalifatun. I am going to designate or appoint an agent on earth. Khalifa and the role of Khalifa, the definition of a Khalifa, the essence of Khalifa is that we need is what we need to understand and explore. Now the one aspect or the one dimension of the word Khalifa is an agent, is somebody who acts, who has the right of acting on my behalf. And so what Allah says in this chapter 2 of the Quran is, I am to designate an agent on earth. Now that agent that God has designated, we all understand it to be the human being, right? Homo sapiens, the man that completely evolved man with a conscience. And so that man with a conscience is what is really designated as the Khalifa or the agent of God. The essential aspect of an agent is that the agent has free will. The agent has power of attorney. The agent is able and competent to act on God's behalf. And that God is able to then withdraw his own direct action within the real world and allow the agent to act righteously on his behalf. Now, the important aspect that I'm referring to that is missing within the Muslim global community is that freedom to act based on conscience, based on the best information, based on rational and logical uh, consideration of all the facts at their disposal. And what we find is that that Khalifa role, that agency role, has over the years been supplanted, being replaced, being removed from the consciousness of the mu'min and replaced with a, a algorithm, with a hard programmed algorithm with a with a blueprint which is the hadith which is the which is the the answer book you see so instead of teaching muslims how to think muslims over the centuries and not very long after the demise of the prophet salam, muhammad they were imposed this algorithm this this forced routine this procedure, as the software developers would call it, this procedure, this algorithm, this rigid way of reasoning and thinking was imposed on the mind of Muslimin, Mu'minin, so that they are unable to act with any sense of free will or free thinking or rational thinking. In fact, every question that confronts a Muslim, he has to seek an existing um, blueprint or an existing um, uh, uh, schema in his mind, you know. And these schemas are, are, are drawn from hadiths, from books where there's tens of thousands of hadiths. Now, a Muslim, a mu'min or a human being, as opposed to to a robot is extremely powerful 
when they are able to consider an, a huge number of facts or a very complex problem and then apply original creative thinking within the parameters of the Quran in an attempt to arrive at a best case judgment. What we've suffered over the past 10 centuries or more is that inability to arrive at any sound judgment because we have only the schema, the schemata or the schemes in our brains and we have only the anecdotes and we have only the pre-programmed procedures for us to consider any problem. And so real life, real life and the countless ways in which real life confronts you and me with problems, we are unable to function. And then what we do is we outsource our creative thinking to non-Muslims. So we look at the West, we look at the amazing achievements in terms of air travel, in terms of um, medical breakthroughs, in terms of uh, political and social administration, and where they have applied you, you know, a complete and full sense of creative, original, critical thinking, where they've applied this to the to the fullest extent and arrived at a number of very well formulated solutions technologically, socially. I agree a lot of problems also because the West is an ungrounded civilization. It is an ungrounded society. It is a society that rejects many of the parameters that we would never reject. You see, like for example, the Quran, the, 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 the sacred Mus'haf, speaks about the abolition of usury. Now the West, of course, they've indulged in usury and those are the things that have put them um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a position where they are, their own existence is threatened or the, the, the good will or the, uh, the well-being of their societies are under threat because they don't have these parameters. Now imagine if we can have the parameters which the Quran presents to us, sexual um, restraint, um, uh, ch ch uh, um, social uh, charity or uh, redistribution, you know, of, of wealth, the curtailing of excessive spending, um, of course, the limits on, on, on interest or usury, um, you know, the protection of the orphans, of the women, of the widows, um, the compulsory nature of self-defense, of social um, cohesion, of defending the values of society. And these are the unchanging, eternal, immutable parameters, I've just mentioned a few, which the Quran lays out, which the divine word lays out. Now imagine if we could apply free thinking and around those parameters. So for example, when the Quran says that uh, they ask you how much they should offer up in charity, say whatever is beyond your need. You see, that is a very broad and wide and powerful understanding. It means that charity is not two and a half percent. Charity is not 20 percent. Charity or sharing of wealth is for whatever is beyond your need. And um, so I'm just mentioning this to you because I'm not arguing for a type of free thinking that you might imagine, you know, that this ultra-liberal kind of unfettered, unrestrained, wild liberalistic type of free thinking. I'm saying that we as the people of, 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 of Allah, the people of um, divine guidance, we are arguing for a free thinking within the parameters of the Quran. Now that is what the Muslim, the average Muslim or the Muslim global community has abandoned. And today we pay the price for that. We are unable to navigate our way out of the n numerous traps 
politically, socially, economically that we've been ensnared in and strangled in. I mean, the least of which is the, um, the, the massacre and the genocide of people in Gaza. We cry, we play, paste things on the internet, on social media, but the real problem is that we are unable to calculate, to figure out, to make sense of our way and of our strategy out of that. Instead, Muslims are there to shout slogans, to cry, to complain. But if you really look at it, they are, they are, they are involved in a polite process, uh, protest. Muslims have opted for a polite protest instead of a radical analysis. We are not able to get to a radical analysis. Analysis at the root of the problem. So what we are caught in year after year, decade after decade, and I don't unfortunately see anything changing soon, is that we are involved in polite protests. And some of us are able to give their lives, and some of us are, be, are ready to do more than just the protest. But at the bottom of it all, we don't see that radical analysis which is needed. We are not commencing the process of free thinking. We are not commencing the process of re-examining our own society, how we should be structured politically, socially, economically. We have abandoned, we are not willing to get to that. Now, if you look at some of the sections of the Muslim world, um, and I'm going to refer, because this is where I've read, where I've tried to understand. If you look at some of the scholars within Iraq, there is a scholar called um, Baqir Sadr, who lived in the 1970s. He was killed by Saddam Hussein. And he wrote a book, Iqtisaduna, Our Economics, um, and he wrote, I think, Falsafatuna, our philosophy. And so it is these people who are now confronting the USA, who are now confronting the tyranny of the West, the genocidal um, tyranny and hypocrisy of the West. It is these people who have, who have commenced the process of the radical analysis. Now, what is a radical analysis? A radical analysis is thinking through our problems afresh, becoming Khalifatullah. In other words, becoming a true agent, an agent able to make sense of the problems and to work towards a solution. Now, in closure, I want to show you this verse here, which is so eloquently um, addressing this particular issue. Uh, this verse, I've, I, I learned it when I was a very young man. I think I was a freshman at university and we had a, we had a uh, MSA, the Muslim Students Association, had a, had a weekend um, workshop away from home. And we slept, you know, out, out and we, we, we studied a few verses and, and this verse takes me there. And uh, I've been able to get to this verse's translation recently. And it just, you know, just, just reminded me of, 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 of this, it just brought that memory back for me. But this is the important verse here, which I've tried to do justice to the meeting, to the meaning. I just want to highlight the specific part. And the, the Arabic is Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In Allah, la you gay yiruma be kaumin hatta you gay yiruma be anfusihim. That's the core piece there. God does not change the overall condition of a society until they transform themselves individually. I hope I've done justice to the meaning, but that is, I think, in contemporary English. The exact meaning of what the Arabic this is. God does not change the overall condition of a society until they transform themselves individually. That's a, 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 a powerful statement. Because the statement comes back to social science today as students of social science, of society, of social transformation, we know, and if you look at the works of Margaret Archer, one of my teachers, you know, which I've learned so much from, Margaret Archer speaks um, abundantly 
about the individual's role within the greater transformation of society. In fact, she argues that there is no possibility of transformation of society as a whole without a change of heart within the individuals of that society. And so if we post more social media posts and we you know, wave our flags of Palestine more and we go on more marches and we shout louder and we do whatever, but there is no transformation within our attitude within our, the very way we look at the world, within the very way we think about the world, then there will be no liberation, my friends, because the verse says it very, very clearly. The verse says it very clearly. There is no transformation of society without a transformation of the, of the individual. And so this video is a call for me and you to abandon the path of the algorithm, the pathway of the schema, the pathway of what to think and not how to think. Because we've been, you know, you can be taught what to think for a hundred years and you will still encounter problems that you would not be able to solve because you haven't been taught how to think. So we should move from what we must think, in other words, the contents of our practice, towards the principles of our practice, the methodologies, how we should formulate our best practice. And my dear friends, Mu'minun, Muslimun, if you and I can start the process of radically revising our beliefs, our understanding, our worldview, and just flush all these fools down the toilet who, is telling, who are telling you and me how, what to think. All these idiots who are making money out of teaching you and me stories and fairy tales. If we can flush them, if we can, you know, stop our support of them, because they will die if we stop keeping them up. And I'm not meaning a physical or violent death. I mean, their the existence will, they will disappear from the scene once we start thinking for ourselves. But if you go to mosque on a Friday and you're very happy to be spoon-fed and to be told a bunch of tales and uh, fairy tales, if that is your Islam, good luck to you, my friends, then you can expect another thousand years of being the whipping boy the victim of those who are applying their minds on this planet. Alhamdulillah.